Hi all, let's get started on uh, this speed line technique. So uh, I've got a base object here, which is uh, the object we'll be uh, following along with. It's uh, I'll be using a little bit of bullet on this. Uh, so here it is, as you can see, uh, it's, uh, I've called it the bend weight map. It's got 0% on the base corners and everything else is 100%. So the 100% stuff is the bit that deforms. Let's get on with the speed lines. We're going to use a two point poly chain, which is going to be displaced in layout. So we need a weight map to begin with. Uh, so let's create one here, weight map. Let's click the plus button and we'll call this tail. Let's give it the initial value of zero. Okay to that. Now under the map tab, let's go to weights. Okay, that gives us this, but what we need is we need the origin to be at zero and this tail end to be at 100%. So what we could do, let's reset this Let's go to automatic, 100% and click apply. Now what you see straight away is it's on the wrong axis. So let's do that. Click on the Z axis, click apply. And you'll see again, it's in the wrong direction. So let's undo that. Let's click that one and then apply again. And here we go. So uh, 0%, 100%. That's all we need to do there. Okay, let's close that down. Next step is to delete points. Which leaves, us a, which leaves us a two point poly chain. F3, rest on ground, minus, so that square us all up so that the uh, uh, front point is right at the origin. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale down to the origin, but we're not gonna scale all the way to zero. We're gonna just leave a little bit of a space at the end. So it can come down quite a bit, just not all the way to zero. So okay that. I'm also going to give this a different uh, surface name from the box. So uh, I've already created it, select lines in this case. Okay, that, save. So what we have is we have our speed lines, we have a box, and we've got a two point poly chain. And that's all the modeling we need. Welcome to layout. So to speed things along, I've uh, animated our box a little bit and I've added some bullet. So these are my bullet settings. I've only really played with four settings, which is uh, well, five settings, shape retention, uh, shape lock uh, set to translation rotation, and these three below it, uh, which gives me, well, it just adds a little bit of personality to the, uh, to the box for no extra effort. <laughs> okay, so let's get on with the lines. Our box is selected, so let's go to uh, setup, store selected, now then let's pop over to our two point poly chain and assign it the, or assign the box as the parent. So it should now be a child of the box. Now, into translation mode and let's, uh, this is where I like the new fixed feature. Uh, let's just move it back slightly. We have the two point polygon chain selected. So let's pop over to the geometry tab under properties uh, add modifier and we're going to use the old inertia plug plugin which i have mixed results with most of the time but it works great with a two point poly chain like this so let's um select our tail weight map and press play and you'll notice nothing happens that's because we need to give it an input value here so an input of two, let's uh, knock this back a bit, shall we? So it's 30 frames. Here we go, so we can crank that all the way up to a value however you see fit. Okay, let's texture this. So let's jump over to VPR. I've turned off the uh, GI and the gradient background. Uh, we'll go in and jump to the, with the two point poly chain selected, we'll jump over to the edges tab and um, we'll thicken it up a little bit. We'll give it a minus point, uh, let's say one for now. So let's jump on to the nodes now. Let's type in turbulence, and we'll use just a simple turbulence color into the tapered line, or the lines taper. <laughs> uh, let's double click on that, and you'll see not a lot happens. That's because 
In reality, it's a very small piece of geometry, but what we do, if we click World Deform, we see the texture, if you like, in world coordinates. Let's knock down the size of the texture a little bit to see a little bit more what's going on. Let's thicken it up, so there you go. 0.5. That's kind of okay for this, I think, because we don't need it to be that thick. We only need a, a subtle variation. So 0.2, something like that. No, it's too much. 0.6. Okay, that'll do for now. So that's one of our points in place. Let's add a couple more. And quite simply, let's clone it. Let's go, uh, let's clone it twice. Um, and then let's give ourselves a bit more timeline. Let's try on the spin. So again, this is where the fixed uh, function comes really, really to hand in uh, 2018. We can just move and get a good idea exactly where our paths will be. Now what you find when you're doing this, although you've set up your lines in one location, uh, which look quite good, they won't look necessarily as good in other locations. So uh, let's, um, let's address that now. Let's start off with the spin, because I quite like those. Uh, it's a little bit strange to start in the middle, but I, but I have. <laughs> uh, so let's select those and label those a particular group, in this case, purple. Lovely. With each of these speed lines, you could obviously go in and vary the amount of lags to add variety but for this for, for demo purposes uh, I'm going to keep them all the same length what I'm going to do is use dissolve to bring them in and out at the correct points now there's a script by Mike Green uh, it's also part of the OD tool set I think Ryan Roy has one in his tool set as well there are a couple of buttons that I've mapped to a menu here called dissolve 0 dissolve 100 and they do exactly that at the press of a button. So uh, let's go to the first frame of our spin and at that is the point I want them to be fully visible, dissolve zero. And then let's go all the way to the beginning and make them 100% dissolved. So they will be invisible. Ha! Make sure you select them all dissolve 100% so we can no longer see them and at this point they will pop on and then we get to the last frame we just want to dissolve them up to 100% and you'll see they're gone so if we look at the graph editor what that script does is it puts a stepped envelope on that dissolved channel that's just been sorted let's address the first part of this move Let's get it into uh, place. So uh, none of those are particularly relevant to us now. So let's let's clone one of these. Let's call it green. And again, we'll just move this one into place. Let's bring up its graph editor and kill off these envelopes here so uh, we want right at the beginning we want to see it dissolve zero and then we'll get to the end and then dissolve it to 100% simple enough clone it as many times as you like let's go three on this instance again this is where the fixed uh, the fixed this comes in useful saves so much creating keyframes and deleting keyframes uh, so that's that
and you get the general idea so you, again you could duplicate those those layers up parent them around and move them to where you want to okay just to add to that technique I've stripped it back to just the spin section because I think you might like this so we've got the uh, as before we have the uh, the spin we've got the dissolve on each of the pieces uh, now let's uh, look in VPR and it would be nice if there was a way to taper out each of these uh, each of these lines rather than just a solid piece albeit slightly distorted but we, well, we can do that and we can use fiber effects to do that so let's uh, select this piece here for instance let's turn the other two off for now actually we don't need VPR these days so if we click on that uh, we can go to effects tools fiber effects okay so let's activate that one and the OpenGL preview okay you can't see much at this point but what we need to do is to give it a lot larger width so let's go point 0.2 that's quite nice albeit slightly too large let's go point uh, well 100 yeah point 100 millimeters let's add some form to this fiber width so we're going to click on the texture next to it layer type will be gradient and our input parameter will be fiber now one end we want to be uh, whatever our fiber width is and at the other end we want it to be zero so let's put in zero there at one end and then at this other end put another keyframe uh, now is it this end alpha zero now I've got that the wrong end so that's uh, it's this end that needs to be alpha zero and the reason I've put alpha zero there is so I have control of that width on this slider here so that's nice and straight away I've got a nicely tapered nicely tapered fiber now going into the fiber effects let's uh, let's set everything to zero now if I can remember rightly command right mouse button and then right mouse button with the option down will paste that value in there so they're all now white let's kill off the spec and all that stuff for now okay that's pretty good let's turn off VPR because we don't think we need that so much there we go so that's that's looking pretty nice but we've got a bit of a funny end here and the reason for that I think if we look at our rotation is our heading is slightly off so it's trying to sort of bend around at the edges so if we just line our end up so we're following the direction of the path we've got a nice fiber look at that okay so now we've got that let's um well for no effort at all let's just add some more so all we've got to do let's give ourselves seven speed lines let's move out radius straight away look at that we've got seven of them I mean you could go go crazy with the speed lines Let's just see what's going on with the uh, dissolve. See whether that uh, that is following. It doesn't seem to be following the original. So if we wanted it to dissolve at that point, for instance, let's try that. Let's try our script again. Uh, plugs dissolve 100. Yes, that's worked great. So we've got full control over those fibers as well. Some those fans kicking in. <laughs> so uh, the uh, styling is obviously useful to us. Don't want any kinks necessarily. Random length, fifty. Yeah, it's a little bit unpredictable, so you're gonna have to play with that. But uh, all those settings are there to play with. 
just to add extra variety which is always nice and some work <laughs> clearly better than others so a quick note about uh, two point poly chains and uh, fiber effects being in the same scene as soon as you create a fiber effect it actually turns off the two point polygons so if you see here so if we turn back on our polygon uh, two point polys which we quite liked you'll notice you can't see them that is because when you as I say when you turn on fiber effects it uh, disables the render line so you need to turn that back on if you want to see them but then you're in, possibly into the trouble if you can see the original which the fiber effects is attached to uh, and under those circumstances what you want to do is you want to pop over to the render tab and just turn off or turn on rather unseen by rays and all these ones and turn off the shadows so that way you've got the best of both worlds good I hope that was uh, of use to somebody uh, let, let me know <laughs>